Hello, Brent Ferris here from Beardman Studios, and I'm here to talk to you about environment checking for artificial intelligence. So one of the things we want to do is that we want to have objects check the environment for what's going on to make them smarter. So let's start off by creating a cube. Oh, that's not a cube at all, it's a sphere. Let's create a cube, and let's set its position to 0, 0, 0. And we're just going to duplicate this cube, press uh, Control D, and then hold down Control and move it over twice. Same thing. And um, uh, same old song and dance. Take these three. Let's just make it look interesting. There we go. So now we have uh, nine cubes here. Uh, now let's go ahead and create a sphere. You can uh, focus on one of your cubes, on this cube here. Uh, with the uh, you want the blue the z-axis going that direction towards your cubes by the way uh, so let's take this sphere up uh, and let's set its scale to 0 0.5 on all axes so uh, what we need to do is duplicate this sphere a few times but before I do that I'm going to explain um, some simplistic checking that I've done before in my past so I would usually create an empty game object inside of the sphere and make it a child of that sphere. Then that game object I would add a sphere collider to and scale it down to just smaller than the player itself. And what I would do is I'd move the player, it's moving, it's moving, and then all of a sudden, hey, it hit something and um, we've hit something and now call a script because I hit something. Now I learned that that's not always the best case once upon a time and uh, one of the things that I found very efficient and uh, probably my favorite is the raycast. So let's go ahead and duplicate this sphere a few times um, to prove my point. So now I have uh, five spheres here and I want to move them back a little bit and now let's create a C sharp script and call it player. And we want to assign player to all these spheres, so select them all and drag player into onto them over here so that they all have the player script. Now let's open up the player script and excuse me while I clean this up. I am very particular about uh, how this looks. Right, let's get rid of all that. All right, so let's um, create a couple variables at the top. Our, f our uh, first variable is going to be the distance that we want to stop the player from whenever it notices the wall. So let's go ahead and create a uh, public float stop distance is equal to, let's say, 1. <coughs> Let's make a second variable, call, and uh, this one's going to be private, and it's going to, oops, it's going to be a boolean, and uh, we're going to call it stopped, and we're going to start it off at false. So inside of our update, what we want to do is we want to move this object. So we can just call the transform dot translate function, and we want to transform it forward. So transform dot forward. Now you're going to notice this is going to be pretty quick once I press play. They're kind of just flying on there and we don't want it to be that that uh, fast. So we'll just add a new variable here at the top. We'll call it public float uh, speed is equal to 0.1f and then we'll multiply our movement by our speed. So we can hit play here and you'll notice they're much slower. So now that we have them going at a good speed, we want to check for a box in front of them using our raycast. So let's set up a, 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 a um, variable here. Uh, the variable is just going to be called, uh, let's do a raycast hit. We're just going to call it hit. Um, and let's just make an if statement. So if physics.raycast, and we pass in a origin and a direction, our origin is going to be ourselves here, so transform dot position, and our direction is, <coughs> excuse me, going to be forward. So transform dot forward.
Great. Uh, now, if we go down, you're going to notice that there's this other option for passing out a hit and a distance. So we we have those already set up. So let's put it out, hit, and stop distance into that. So if this if something if this passes, that means the ray has hit something. So if it's hit something, we're going to stop. So stopped is equal to true. And if we're stopped, if we're not stopped, I should say, uh, if we're not stopped, we're going to move. Otherwise, we're not going to move anymore. So let's go ahead. I mean, we're pretty much done with this check now. If I hit play, they're going to move. And then three of them are going to stop one unit away from these uh, boxes from where it hit. So to prove the point even further, I can select this object and change its um, stop distance to, let's say, 2. Uh, and this one to three and leave this one at one I suppose so I hit play you'll see this one stops at three this one stops at two and this one stops at one so uh, with that I mean that's pretty much um, how it works you can add blocks down here since uh, the other two also have the raycast they'll stop inside of here just for fun see they stop inside there too so there we go we have some artificial intelligence uh, tracking the environment and reacting to it so with that I believe we are done